The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. For nearly a hundred years, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde has been thought of as a tale of horror, which of course it is, but it is also an intriguing mystery. Our mystery drama, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, was especially adapted from the classic by Robert Louis Stevenson, for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Kevin McCarthy. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Come. Come with me now, back through the years to London, England in 1896. It is late of a pleasant spring evening... And we find ourselves strolling in Cavendish Square, along with Jeffrey Utterson and his friend, Dr. Mortimer Lanyon. Well, I must say I've enjoyed our walk, Utterson. We'll soon be at my place. Will you come in? Oh, thanks, Lanyon, but I think not. I've got a good deal of work to get through before I go to bed. <laughs> I needed a break, though, a breath of air, which is why I came for this walk with you. And... Good heaven. Hmm? That man coming toward us. Oh, strange-looking fellow, isn't he? Oh, his face in the light of the street lamp. Is... That's the most evil face I've ever... I mean, he, he's coming straight at us. He, he's going to knock one of us down if we don't... Oh, I... <laughs> You fool, you've knocked my friend down. You, hold on there. Hold on there, I say. Let go. No, not on your life. Let go. You not only knocked my friend down, you walked straight over him. Sorry, let me go. Who are you? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? You walked on my friend as if as if he were part of the paper. I said I'm sorry. That, that's not enough. By no means enough. Oh, who is this man? Lanyon, uh, are you all right? Uh, I'm not sure. You walked on me. Stomped right over me. Who the devil are you? I warn you, the two of you. Uh, let me go. Oh, just let me go. Uh, I say or I'll kill you both. Look out. He's bringing that heavy walking stick and he... Kill you both. Oh, you don't. Ah. You struck me. No one strikes Edward Hyde and lives. No. He'll kill us both with that walking stick. Run at us and run. Come back. Come back here and I'll kill you. Stop. Stop. I can't go on. My my heart. Oh, my too. It's, it's pounding like a trip hammer. Oh, good Lord, Hutchison. I've never had such an experience of this kind in my life. Are you all right? You took a blow from that walking stick. And... Hutchison, what is it? The name. The name he used. Did you hear it? Yes, but oh, what was it? Oh, I think I know, but I want to be sure. Hyde, he said, Edward Hyde. That's what I thought. Well, what of it? Well, the way you looked, uh, do you know the man? Does the n- n- man mean something to you? No, 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 I don't know the man. But the name, oh, yes, the name means something to me. What? Well, what? I... And I'm not sure I can tell you, Lanyon, I... I'm not sure I have the right as a lawyer to do so. On the other hand, I... Yes? Well, you are my oldest friend, and your daughter Beatrice is engaged to Dr. Jekyll, isn't she? Yes, yes, they're to be married in September. Then, and perhaps I should tell you that... No, no, it would serve no purpose. Why, Mr. Utterson? Oh, good, good evening, Poole. I, I know it's late, but is uh, Dr. Jekyll's home? Oh, to you, sir, at any hour, I'm sure. Come in, sir. The doctor is at work in his laboratory. 
If you'll wait here a moment, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, Paul. Excuse me, Dr. Jekyll. What? Damn it. Poole, I told you I was not to be disturbed. Well, I, I know, sir, but... But, but what? Mr. Utterson is calling, sir. Utterson? At this hour? Well, oh, all right. Show him in. Uh, this way, Mr. Utterson, please. Thank you, Paul. Well, Utterson, this is a late hour visit. Jekyll, I'll come straight to the point. Dr. Lanyon and I were out walking in Cavendish Square less than an hour ago when we noticed a strange man, a, a sort of, hmm? I don't know, dwarf-like creature with, with, I assure you, a face that, well, it was so vile, so evil, it brought the sweat out on my brow. Well, well. Well, he, this, this man, he, hmm? he walked straight into Lanyon, knocked him down, and then walked right over him. I ran after him, an argument ensued, and then, hmm? well, he threatened to kill both Lanyon and me with his walking stick. He went into a rage I can only describe as bestial, swinging the walking stick at us, and, and... And what? Well, I don't think he meant to give his name. In fact, he refused to give it when I asked for it. But in his rage, he forgot himself, and he used his name. Edward Hyde. And? What of that? Six months ago, you insisted that I destroy your old will and make out a new one. Leaving everything to a certain Edward Hyde, right? Oh, 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 I see. Now, I told you then, as I tell you now, I considered the terms of the will most curious. Indeed, decidedly strange. And as I told you then, and I tell you now, I see nothing strange in wanting to leave my money to a certain beneficiary in the event of my death. Or your disappearance. That's what I find strange. That's what worries me. Even more now in the light of what happened tonight. Jekyll, I ask you once again, who is Edward Hyde? Do you mean the Edward Hyde I've bequeathed my estate to? Or the Edward Hyde you ran into tonight? They are one and the same. And there's certainly more than one Edward Hyde in all of London. Oh, yes, I'm quite sure. But only one Edward Hyde who might have been carrying this. My walking stick? The walking stick I gave you several years ago on your birthday. I'd know it anywhere. Hmm. Jekyll, are you in trouble? Huh? What do you mean, trouble? What with this Hyde? Does he, does he have something on you? Is he, is he blackmailing you? That's a ridiculous thought. Then what is it? How can you, Dr. Henry Jekyll, one of the most honorable and respected physicians in London, have any association, whatever, with a, with a, a terrible person like this Hyde? Why have you made over your estate to him, especially when you were to marry Beatrice Lanyon? And why, why, why that stipulation in the event of your disappearance? Jekyll, I beg you, tell me what it means. I cannot... Uh... I cannot. But as your Dear friend, I... You are the friend you say you are. Oh, and you are, Utterson. You are. And then do me the favor of never mentioning Edward Hyde again. Well, if this is your last word on the subject, Jekyll... It is. Very well, then. Good night. Oh, Paul. Yes, Mr. Utterson, sir. I'd, um... I'd like to ask you something. Oh, anything, sir. Who is Edward Hyde? Oh, God help me, sir. I wish I knew. We, all of us in this house, everyone of Dr. Jekyll's servants, wish we knew. All right, tell me about him, this Hyde. Dr. Jekyll was away on, on a house call, I think. The front door bell rang, and I answered it, and... And there stood the... Oh, a frightful creature, Mr. Utterson, frightful. I've met Mr. Hyde. I know. He said he wanted to see Dr. Jekyll. I started to say that Dr. Jekyll was not at home, but he pushed right past me in the rudest way, sir, and went straight into Dr. Jekyll's laboratory. Yes, yes, I quite understand. Go on. 
Well, it, later on, I, I was in the kitchen when the bell rang from the laboratory. I went into the laboratory, and there, to my complete surprise, was Dr. Jekyll. To your surprise? Why, yes. You see, sir, he'd forgotten his keys, and I was so surprised that he'd somehow got back into the house. Well, well did, did you ask him how? Oh, I did, sir, yes. But he ignored the question. Never mind that, he said. I, I want to give you certain instructions concerning Mr. Edward Hyde. He then said that Mr. Hyde was to be admitted any time he called. I see. Tell me, Paul, what is Mr. Hyde's manner toward Dr. Jekyll? I mean, when they're together, how does Mr. Hyde act toward Dr. Jekyll? Or Dr. Jekyll toward this Mr. Hyde? Well, they're never together, sir. That's puzzling, very puzzling, to say the least. Oh, Mr. Addison, sir, all of us here are convinced that our master is in dire trouble. If you could help the good doctor... Yes, Paul. Yes, I certainly shall, if I can. Enchanting, Henry. enchanting. Well, I had no idea you'd come into the music room. How long have you been there? Only a few moments, sir. When you become Mrs. Henry Jekyll, I shall insist that you play for me every night after dinner. It shall be my wifely pleasure <laughs> and duty, kind <laughs> sir. <laughs> Henry, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but, oh, Beatrice, I want you so. And I want you, but, but until we're married, Henry, I... Well, must we wait until September? It's such a long time. Oh, father. Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't know you were here, Henry. How are you? How are you? Dr. Lanyon, Utterson tells me you had a rather bad experience yeah. tonight. Yes, yes, but I'm quite recovered, mm -hmm. thank you. Still a few bruises where that fearsome creature stomped on me, but <laughs> otherwise all right. Um, <clears throat> there's something I've been meaning to ask you, Henry. Yes? Ah, uh, but later. I don't want to interrupt you two lovebirds. Oh, Father. <laughs> uh, well, I shall be in my study. Drop in before you go. Of course. Well, now, Henry... Where were we? Oh, yes, the wedding. No, no, look, dearest, we can't possibly change the date now. What if I insist? I don't think I understand. I say, what if I insist? But, Henry, you you wouldn't. It would be so unlike you. It is so unlike you even to be talking this way. You've always gone along with my wishes. I have wishes, too. And rights, Beatrice, I have rights. Well, really, Henry, really, you... You have no right, as you say, until we marry. Mm. It troubles me you should even say such a thing. In fact, Henry... Uh... Yes? In fact, what? Henry, I've been meaning to talk to you about this, and I keep putting it off because I... Well, I... I feel a bit awkward, but... Well, to be honest with mm. you, my darling, you're not the same man that I became engaged to. No, that's a silly remark. Well, the way you've acted the last few times we've been together, there's something different about you, Henry. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but you, you've changed somehow mm. in some subtle way. Changed. Uh. Why, even your face. What about my face? Well, Henry, you don't have to snarl. What about it? My face. You're hurting me, Henry. Please don't. Uh. Really? <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Sorry isn't enough. More and more you keep manhandling me, and then you say you're sorry. What's come over you? What changed you in the past few weeks? What did you mean about my face? Oh, darling. Oh, it's only that... I suppose you're working too hard or something of the sort, but there are lines in your face that I've never seen before. Lines of mm. tiredness, I guess. Yes, yes, that... That would be it. Shadows under your eyes. Mm. Well, even now they look darker. Deeper. Oh, and darling, I, I didn't notice before, but I do now. I think that you neglected to shave today. I... I must go. Go? You've mm. only been here mm. a few minutes. Patient, patient. Remember, patient. Promise oh. to visit. I'll drop in again tomorrow. 
Uh, was that Henry who just left? Yes, Father. But he said he'd drop by the study to see me before he went. Yes, I... I know he did, but... Oh, Beatrice, what's happened? I don't know. For a moment, I'd have sworn that Henry was changing before my eyes. <laughs> tale of horror, yes, but also, as I said, a mystery. At least it was to Mr. Utterson, Dr. Lanyon, and his lovely daughter, Beatrice. A mystery that was to turn to tragic horror before they learned the truth about Dr. Henry Jekyll. I shall return shortly with Act Two. goes without saying that to tamper with natural law will lead to an unnatural end. Mr. Utterson, Dr. Lanyon, Poole, and the servants in Dr. Jekyll's household have begun to suspect that Jekyll is hiding some awful secret from them. A secret that involves the man known as Edward Hyde. Even Beatrice Lanyon, Dr. Jekyll's fiancée, has begun to wonder at the change she senses in him. It may even be that the London police are beginning to wonder. Come in. Inspector Wolfe of Scotland Yard to see you, Dr. Jekyll. Oh? Ah, show him in, Poole. Yes. Uh, This way, Inspector. Oh, thank you. Dr. Jekyll? Yes? Leave us, Poole. Inspector Wolfe of Scotland Yard, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Please take a chair, Inspector. Thank you. Well, now, Inspector... What can I do for you? Hey, well, I'm not sure you can do anything at all, Doctor, but um, are you aware that in the past six weeks there's been a rash of murders in London, extremely Mm -hmm. brutal murders, Doctor? Mm -hmm. Each victim has been bludgeoned to death. Why do you come to me? Well, on more than one occasion, the murderer has been seen while committing these terrible attacks of violence. Not clearly seen since the murderers have always been done at night and in in dark streets, you know. Mm. But there have been glimpses of them, and putting them together, the yard has come up with what you might call a a composite picture of the man. I still don't see. I just don't understand why you've come to me about this. Well, you will in a moment, Doctor. The man, the murderer, appears to be a short, malformed, dwarfish creature who, even though his face has never been clearly seen, gives a strong impression of, of, of evil. Doctor... A particularly brutal murder took place last night in Montague Street. Dr. Danvers Carew was bludgeoned to death. Carew? Member of Parliament? Aye, the same. He was beaten to death with a walking stick. And the murderer was the dwarf-like creature that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. The person who saw the murder take place followed the murderer afterwards, you see, keeping at a safe distance, you may be sure. Mm -hmm. And, well... That's why I'm here. Why precisely? The murderer was seen to enter this house. You must be... Well, I was about to say you must be joking. But, of course, you're serious. You, uh... You don't happen to be acquainted with a Mr. Hyde, do you? A Mr. Edward Hyde? Uh... Well, yes, yes. But he's not an occupant of this house. Uh, he doesn't live here. No. Does he visit? Well, on occasion, on occasion, yes. But I, uh, I haven't seen him now in, uh, oh, months, I should say. Uh-huh. Hmm? Friend of yours, is he? No, no, no. Patient, patient. He suffers from a nervous disorder. Comes to see me whenever he's in need of medication. Well, thank you for your time. Good day. Good day, Inspector. kept you waiting, Poole. Oh, not at all, Mr. Utterson. What can I do for you? Mr. Utterson, I'm worried, fearfully worried, about Dr. Jekyll. Oh? You remember, sir, we were talking a long time back, near two months, I should think, about Mr. Hyde. And you asked me if I'd ever seen Dr. Jekyll and him, Hyde, together. Yes, there's something like that, yes, and you said you never had. Well, they are together now, sir. 
Not that they mightn't have been together before, but I, I know for certain that they are now. There are fights, yes, fights going on in that laboratory between the doctor and... Oh, that terrible man, Mr. Hyde. Oh, this time? No, 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 sir. Arguments. I hear Dr. Jekyll moan and groan and cry out, No, no, leave me be, leave me be. Oh, Mr. Utterson, sir, I, I'm so afraid for Dr. Jekyll, so afraid. Yes, well, you're saying that comes as no surprise, fool. The truth is, I've known he was in some kind of trouble since he... Well, since he changed his will months ago in favor of Edward Hyde. In favor of Edward Hyde? Oh, yes. He's left him everything in the event of his death. But most puzzling, in the event of his disappearance as well. Oh, sir, sir, I don't understand it. Nor do I. And to be honest with you, I've... I've given up trying to understand it. Then huh? I must do what must be done. What do you mean? For the first time in my life, Mr. Utterson, I shall disobey Dr. Jekyll's orders. For his sake, I shall see to it that Mr. Hyde never enters Dr. Jekyll's house again. <laughs> You hear me, Paul? Let me in. Never, Mr. Hyde. Never. Go away and stay away. No, you stole my key, so it was you. It must have been you, and now you bar me from the house. And you'll stay barred as long as I'm here. Fool, I warn you. All the way. Uh, you'll not enter this house. Uh, you, you. Fool, fool. Listen to me, fool. I'm listening. I'm in trouble, fool. I need Dr. Jekyll's help. He is not at home. Let me come in and wait for him, Poole. I am in desperate trouble. Then stay in it and be damned, do you? Father, what is it? I've never seen you so upset. Well, read this. My dear Dr. Lanyon, as you value my friendship and my life, please go to this very night to my house. Father, this is a note from Henry. What... Yes, then you needn't read any further. He asks me, begs me, to go to his home, enter his laboratory, and procure certain chemicals and powders, giving very explicit directions as to where I should find them. When the message was delivered an hour or so ago, I have just returned from following Henry's instructions. As you see, the message directs that I am to give these materials to whoever calls for them. But what does it all mean? Well, you are Henry's fiance. You are close to him, closer than anyone else. He's obviously in some sort of difficulty. And if you know what it is, I charge you for his sake as well as your own. Tell me what it is. But if I knew, I'd tell you. I... But yes, he is in grave difficulty. But whatever it may be, he keeps to himself. And what would it have to do with chemicals and powders and elixirs? Oh, Father, I don't know. No. Lamb is retired. I'll answer the door. Oh, you retire as well, my dear. No, Father, I want to send... Do as I say, my child. Go to your room. I have a feeling that I'd best tend to this alone. I'll go now. Very well, Father. How damnably long does it take you to answer the door? Let me in. Let me in quickly. You took your own sweet time, man. I... Where are the materials you were told to get? In my study. Come. Let us get them. Come, come, come. Where are they? Where are they? Right there on my desk. Oh, yes, you did well. Uh, all seems to be here. Believe me. You misunderstood. I didn't say shut the door. I said leave me. I didn't misunderstand, Mr. Hyde. You know me. From the newspaper reports of your murders and the general description of you, all, all of London knows you now, I should think. Believe me, go out and close the door and don't return until I'm gone. Not until you tell me what connection you have with my friend and my daughter's betrothed, Dr. Henry Jekyll. I tell you... If you value your sanity, leave me. I will know the answer 
to who you are and what connection you have with Jekyll, or you will not leave this room. Fool, hide. You fool. The police are hot on my trail. I killed the man. You no, know, I'm not surprised. I went to Jekyll's house, but his blithering servant refused to let me in. That's why I sent that message to you. You? But it was signed by Dr. Jekyll. You don't understand. And I intend to understand, or you will not leave this room, this house. Ah! Back off, back off, I say. Yes, as you see, I'm prepared for you. This gun is loaded, Mr. Hyde, and I shall use it if need be. You leave me no choice if the police find me here. Well, they will not find me. The potion is quickly prepared. The potion? Once again, leave me. No. Then damn you. Witness what you shall witness. You're as big a fool as Jekyll. They're given the chance to leave well enough alone, but no. You must know the answer. Well, you shall know it. Your friend Dr. Jekyll had a theory. A theory he talked about so endlessly, so compulsively, that he bored everyone within the sound of his voice. You know the theory, do you not? Yes, I was one of the bored listeners. Yes, I know. Hmm? But each of us contains within himself not one spirit, but two. A good spirit, an evil spirit. What else? There was more. Jekyll also believed that a way might be found, yes, via a potion that would release that other spirit, the evil side of us, the side we all try to keep under control. Exactly, and you all laugh, you... The mercury! Where's the mercury? You didn't break... You did, yes, yes, I'm there. Here it is. Thank God. Yes, yes, you all laugh. You said it couldn't be done. And even if it could be done, you all said it would be madness to try it. You were right in one respect. It was indeed madness. You, if I follow you, you are saying that Jekyll... that Jekyll carried out the experiment? He did. And it was successful? Successful? For me, yes, for me. For him, tragic. For you see, Dr. Lanyon, I am in control now, whereas before Dr. Jekyll controlled me, I now control Dr. Jekyll. What in God's name are you saying? You shall see. Yes, in a moment. You shall see. There. The potion is ready. Before I drink it, I offer you one more chance to leave. No. Well, in that case, Lanyon, God help you. Oh, you, you drank that. Why do you think I mixed it? But it contained mercury, quicksilver, and other. Mister, hide what? Oh, oh, my God! What's happening? You're changing before my eyes. You're getting taller. The hair on your head changing color. Good Lord. What are you going through? You're becoming a different man. A different being. Uh, Heaven help you. Uh, you you uh, become, uh, before my eyes, you become Henry Chippewa. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Uh. And just in time, the police are at your door, Dr. Lanyon. Let them in. I have nothing to fear. For the moment. And so, before the shocked eyes of Dr. Lanyon, Dr. Jekyll's secret is revealed. Edward Hyde and Dr. Jekyll are one and the same man. Questions arise. What did Hyde mean by saying he is now in control of Jekyll? What did Jekyll mean when he said he has nothing to fear for the moment? We shall see when I return shortly with Act Three. The Scotland Yard police, in pursuit of the murderous Mr. Hyde, arrive at Dr. Lanyon's house in Cavendish Square, just as Hyde is transformed into the noted and respected physician, Dr. Jekyll. Now, as the police urgently ring the bell of the front door. Dr. Lanyon, you must answer the door. I, 
I can't get up from this chair, Jekyll. My, my heart, I feel weak, faint. Then I suppose I must let them in. Beatrice, how long have you been outside the store? Long enough, Henry. You know. Oh, heaven help you, Henry. Yes, I know. There's the police at the door. You'll not give me away. Dr. Jekyll. Inspector Wolf, isn't it? Yes, but what? Uh, one moment. Sergeant, place your men through every entrance and exit is guarded. Now, uh, if I may come in, Dr. Jekyll? Certainly. My dear, this is Inspector Wolf of Scotland Yard. My fiance, Miss Beatrice Lanyon, Inspector. How do you do? Oh, no, a thousand apologies, ma'am, but we're looking for a murderer. A certain Edward Hyde. And what makes you think you'll find him here? A description of him was given to every handsome cab driver in London. One of them saw him enter this house little more than half an hour ago and notified the yard. Well, you've obviously made a mistake. This is the home of Dr. Lanyon. I am his daughter. We are not acquainted with anyone named Hyde. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon, Dr. Jekyll. You said something? No. 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 Miss Lanyon, I should like your permission to search the premises. Well, I'm afraid that's impossible. Oh, I don't think you quite understand. If our information is correct, Edward Hyde is in this house, and he's a dangerous man, Miss Lanyon. A murderer. I'm sorry. No. Good night, Inspector. Inspector, I said good night. Is your father at home? Yes. Then I must ask to see him. If you'll not give us permission to search the house, perhaps he will. I'm sorry, Inspector, but my father... I insist, madam. Inspector, there is no Edward Hyde in this house any more than there was an Edward Hyde in mine when you called there. Mm. Very well. I won't pursue this matter further tonight, Miss Lanyon. But Dr. Jekyll... I think we should have another talk, you and I, about your Mr. Hyde. He's not my Mr. Hyde, Inspector. He's a patient I haven't seen in a long time. Should he pay me another professional visit, I shall certainly notify you. And now, sir, good night. Good night. Henry. Uh, Oh, Henry, what terrible thing have you done? My darling. Oh, my dearest, I... I'm trapped by my own folly. Your father warned me a long time ago to give up my experiments. If only I had heeded his advice. Well, heed it now. Yeah, it's impossible. It's too late. Why too late? I've lost control over Hyde. He controls me. What? Over these past months, he's grown stronger and I weaker. I never know how or when the transformation... Oh, horrible transformation will take place... Heaven help me, Beatrice. I have become Hyde's slave. It's not too late. We can't let it be. Father could help you, Henry. I'm sure he can. Come, come. We'll ask his advice. He'll know what to do. Perhaps you're right. Yes. Let's... Let's see what he has to say. Father, the police have gone, and Henry's in fearful trouble, as you know, and he wants to... Father? Dr. Lanyon. Father, what is it? Why do you just sit there staring? Oh, my God. Oh, Henry. Yes. He's dead. (laughs) What he saw tonight was too much for his weak heart. Edward Hyde murdered him. Heaven forgive me. I murdered him. like to stay a little longer, Mr. Utterson. No, child, they'll start to fill in the grave shortly. There's no need to put yourself through that. Come along now, I insist. Oh, very well. Beatrice, if you would care to dismiss your carriage and let me take you home in mine. Oh, thank you, Mr. Utterson, but I, I'd like to be alone. You, you understand. Yes, of course. I'll go with Beatrice. Oh, no, thank you, Henry. No, I, I really do wish to be by myself for a time. I, I see. I'll call on you then tomorrow. If 
I am able. Uh, no, uh, I, I shall be busy tomorrow. There's so much to do winding up father's affairs. Perhaps if I'll I... I'll get in touch with I... you, Henry. Uh, good day. Uh, good day, Mr. Utherson. Good day, Peter. Uh, Jekyll, uh, join me in my carriage. I... I want to talk to you. My own carriage is waiting. Send it along. I must talk with you. As you wish. You may go along, Johnson. I'm riding with Mr. Utterson. After you, Jekyll. Well, what is it? I, uh... I want to talk to you about your will. Oh, what now, Utterson? Oh, what need now? you ask? You read the newspapers. You know this man, Edward Hyde, is a monster, a murderer sought by the police. God knows what your connection with him may be, what hold he has on you, and, and you needn't say he hasn't. He, he must have. Why else would a man of your reputation, a celebrated and respected physician, leave all his worldly possessions to such a, 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 a human horror? They are my possessions. I have the right to do with them as I wish. And I, the right as your solicitor, to refuse to let you do You can't stop me. Well, perhaps I can. How? In what way? I'm not sure. I'll have to seek advice on this. It may very well be, Jekyll, on grounds of protecting you from yourself, that I can have you declared incompetent to handle your affairs. Incompetent? I incompetent? How dare you say such a thing to me? How dare you even think such a thing? Jekyll, let go, my arm. You're, you're hurting my will is my will. No. Edward Hyde is to inherit everything, everything in the event of my death or my disappearance. What is the matter with you? Take your hand off. Lord, you your hand. Jekyll, you your hand. Uh, uh, wrong hand. Uh, the fingernails are becoming Hey, gone. you meddling little pip. Hey, it's changing. Of course it's changing, you interfering muddlehead. Drew me out of my inheritance, would you? Prevent me from inheriting you. Jekyll's wealth? You. Uh, you oh, my uh, God. You're Hyde. Yeah. You are Edward Hyde. Yes, Edward Hyde. Edward Hyde. Murderer. Murderer. Edward Hyde. Monster, according to you. Yes, but how? How? How could he? Uh, no, no, no. You're yes, you're killing me. You're, no. Die. Uh, die. 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 Uh, uh, Let me in. Henry? Oh, do you hear me? Open this door. No, Henry, no, uh, I've come to help you. No. Let me in. Oh, oh Beatrice. Oh, Beatrice. Oh, Henry. It's the end. Where? It's the end, Beatrice. The end. The potion doesn't work anymore. It, it's useless. Hyde takes over whenever he pleases. Oh, dear Lord. Mm. There must be something we can... What is this gun? Oh, I meant to take my life in this horror once and for all. But he won't let me. I have only to pick up the gun and he returns. I no longer have any will of my own. He possesses me, owns me, like a demon. Ah, oh. What is it? Oh, get out of here, Beatrice. Leave me at once. You're... you're... Yeah. Changing, you're becoming high. <laughs> Let go of me, Henry. Let go of you when I've wanted you. And for you, lasted for you, my lovely creature, all these months. Don't, ah. don't, don't kiss me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Kiss you and fondle you and caress you. And, uh, no. Yeah. You're stronger than I thought. No. My beautiful Beatrice. Good, good, very good. That makes the sport of it. What? Stay away. Come Stay away. away. From you? Stay away from you who were made for love? Would you deny a man a pleasure? Ah! Say, hey, you're very, very quick. Strong, too. Strong and quick. And desirable. Stop trying to elude me. You can't. You know, you can't. You are strong, but I am stronger. You are quick, but I am quicker. And oh, you are a beauty. Ah, and I a beast, eh? Beauty and the beast, eh? Beauty and the beast. Put that down. No, you, huh? you could stop Henry Jekyll from using this gun, but you can't stop me. 
Get away from that door. <laughs> Let me out of here. Oh, no. <laughs> Stay back or I'll shoot. <laughs> Go ahead, shoot. I didn't think you could. It isn't in you to kill. Even such a thing as me. No. No. Oh, dear uh-huh. God, help me. Just give me the gun right here and then... Once you're in my arms... No, no. Now, don't struggle. Please. It'll do you no good. Oh, Give me the gun. Give me... Ah! Miss Landon. Oh, good heavens. Miss Landon. Miss Landon. And the gun went off and killed Mr. Hyde. Hyde? But on the floor... That's Dr. Jekyll. What? See for yourself. Oh, oh, yes. I see. But if the gun killed Mr. Hyde, how? Uh, Don't ask any questions now, Pooh. Not now. Just go and fetch the police. <laughs> As a baffled and distraught pool rushes out into the storm to find a policeman, Beatrice Lanyon gazes down at the body of Dr. Henry Jekyll. Or is it Edward Hyde? I'll be back shortly. to know that the adaptation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde I've just brought you comes closer to Stevenson's original than any other I know. I think you'll agree it was as much a mystery as a tale of horror. Our cast included Kevin McCarthy, Marion Seldes, Ian Martin, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.